The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. And hello and welcome to Open, the one and only show that opens the Bronx and the rest of the world right to you. I'm your host, Darren Jaime, and today we'll update you on what's happening in and around our community and around the world. First up, as Black History Month comes to a close, we'll update you on some milestone events that happened on this very day, February 27th. And next, we'll break down some of the latest headlines in local, national, and international news. And after that, we'll hear about an effort to rebuild a school and advance the community. Plus, We Are the Bronx is awarding grants to Bronx organizations. We'll learn what you can do to qualify and find out what steps are being taken by community leaders to strengthen our families. And finally, we'll hear from a photographer capturing history. So stay tuned because all this and much more is heading your way because right now we're officially open. And hello, Bronxites. I'm your host, Darren Jaime, and today is Wednesday, February 27th, 2013. Of course, you're watching Open, the only live and interactive program bringing the Bronx and New York straight to your TV set. We want to hear from you, so please give us a tweet throughout the show at BronxNetTV. And of course, we'll air what you have to say throughout the program. Well, today we kick off with Black History Facts, and today in Black History in the year 1872, Charlotte Ray, the first African-American female lawyer, graduated from Howard Law School. Ray wasn't the only first female African-American lawyer in the United States, but also the first practicing female lawyer in Washington, D.C. In 1988, pardon, 1897, I should say, Marian Anderson, an acclaimed African-American singer, was born. Anderson began her career in the choir of the Union Baptist Church and set the stage for the civil rights era. She was one of the most celebrated singers of the 20th century. In 1942, Charlene Hunter Galt made civil rights history in Georgia. As one of the first two African-American students admitted to the University of Georgia. Upon graduating, Hunter Galt pursued a career as an award-winning journalist known for her work in both television and print. In 1988, figure skater Debbie Thomas became the first African-American to win an Olympic medal. Thomas competed in the 1988 Winter Olympic Games in Calgary, winning the bronze, and Thomas also earned her bachelor's degree in 1991, then retired from skating the following year. She went on to enter the medical program at Northwestern University. And those are the events that took place in black history. And coming up, we'll have the latest headlines to hit the news. But first, Bronx High School students gathered to honor the great Martin Luther King Jr. and his accomplishments. Our Bronx Step reporter, Nialani Rodriguez, has the story and brings it to us. We're here at Lehman College's Lovinger Theater, where they're hosting their annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. tribute to pay homage to African and African American culture. Urban Male Leadership Program Director Michael Dees welcomed Bronx High School students to join him in not only recognizing a great African American historical figure, but to also help them realize the importance of gaining an education. Dr. Martin Luther King was truly a man not just for nonviolence, but he also talked advocately about education. So today we would like to pay tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King and invite high school students so that they can understand a pipeline from high school to college. Award recipient Pedro Baez believes that students should be more informed about their history. I have a 15 year old daughter and to her anything beyond 20 years ago is something like ancient history. So I think it's very important for students to remember, to be told about these individuals who fought for many of our civil rights that we enjoy today. 
keynote speaker, Helen Foster, who was also awarded during the event, took this opportunity to explain to students why knowing about the past and understanding who came before them is so important for their future. You have to know that before there was a Martin Luther King, there was a Reverend John, there was an E.D. Nixon, there was a Fred Shuttlesworth, and these names may not mean something to you, but then you need to go and learn who they are. We are all here because someone else sat right in these seats and paved the way for us to be here. Dr. King's legacy has not only relevance for the past, but relevance for the future also. It's important to understand his place in history, but also what came before Dr. King and what will go forward after Dr. King. This event showcased not only the importance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s work, but also the importance of African culture as a whole. Reporting for BronxNet, this is Neilani Rodriguez. And thank you, Neilani. Turning to the political front in Washington, senior administration officials do not expect the mandatory spending cuts to be averted. It's been reported from the White House that President Barack Obama will not budge and is waiting on the Republican Party to cave in on higher taxes. Officials do not have a predication as to when this will be solved, but many do agree this will be detrimental to our economy. Now tune in next week to open as our financial expert Jordan Goodman will be here in studio updating us on the current state of the economy. And on the international front for the first time in over three months, a rocket was fired from the Gaza Strip landing on southern Israel Tuesday morning. Many say this was done in response to the recent death of a 30-year-old Palestinian prisoner who spent his final days held in an Israeli prison. The rocket left roads damaged, but there have been no reported injuries. And in the Bronx, former borough president Adolfo Carrion has announced his plan to run for mayor on Tuesday. Carrion has dropped his Democratic Party enrollment and plans to run as part of the Independence Party. In his first speech as a mayoral candidate, Carrion announced his plan to engage New Yorkers discouraged by bipartisan politics. And those are the headlines, and we got to take a quick break. But coming up, we'll hear about a plan to improve empty space in our community. We'll explain when we return. So here are the keys. Congratulations, it's officially yours. I'm sure you'll have many happy years here. Except for you, because you'll be gone three years from now, struck down by the same disease that got your father, so you won't be around for them. And sadly, it could have been detected early with a simple test, but you didn't have it. Okay, who wants to check out the backyard? For a list of tests every man should have, go to AHRQ.gov. I remember how much you said you liked mine. Oh. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who take you just as you are. Two outs with a runner on first base. Now the big guy comes up the bat, hitting 342 with 92 RBIs and 36 on Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Take my hand and start a brand new day. And together as one will start to see some change. Underneath everything we are, underneath everything we do, we are all people. Connected, interdependent, united. And when we reach out a hand to one, we can influence the condition of all. That's what it means to live united. Did you find the flashlight and the batteries? Yes. Did you make sure we're not missing anything in the first aid kit? Yep. Did you go through the plan with the kids again? 
Yes. The more you prepare today, the more you'll be able to reduce the devastating effects of a tornado, an earthquake, a power outage, or any other disaster. Well, all across the five boroughs, there have been recent reports of possible school closures. The school 19 in Yonkers has been abandoned since 1992, and individuals have come together with a comprehensive plan to develop a sustainable institution for both the youth of the community. We are joined today by Lamont Badru and Christopher Gonzalez to discuss their campaign, Free School 19. And, uh, we welcome you both to the show, and uh, Lamont, obviously for you, School 19 is uh, has a lot of parallels to what goes on here in our five boroughs, particularly the borough of the Bronx, where we hear all the time about possible school closures and have seen uh, school closures. So give us a little bit about School 19. Sure. I mean, School 19 has been abandoned, like you said, since 1992. Um, it sits at the center of Southwest Yonkers, which is a working class, poor community of color, right, in a city that... Um, has had a history of division and we feel that it's important that we identify locations in our community that can be restored and used for mean meaningful purposes and what better place than a school building sitting in the center of a troubled community so our plans are to renovate the space and turn it into a neighborhood high school community center daycare center and we also want to incorporate um, a multimedia facility within the space. Mm -hmm. What have you been hearing so far from both residents and the community? I mean, we've, we've had overwhelming support. And I think the thing that's interesting and unique about this project is that it's been a combination of a project management sort of business-like model in terms of approaching the acquisition and redevelopment of the property, but also a grassroots model, right? So when we first launched the campaign, it was at a community event. We had community members fill out surveys so that they could give us an idea of what types of things would they like that they that they would like to see in their community. And we incorporated all of that into our vision and our proposal that we're getting ready to present to the city actually in a couple of hours today. And I know that you get ready to present this proposal to the city, but also Christopher, you've taken particular uh, you know, note and, and caption of this because you're actually documenting this on, on film. What really drew you to the whole school nineteen uh, proposal? I mean, uh, you know, other than the fact that, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I feel it's a good, you know, campaign overall, you know, good message, and, you know, and I like, you know, the work that they're doing, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, it's really important, and, you know, highlighting, you know, a lot of the work that, you know, a lot of community members and, you know, Lamont himself has done, and, like, uh, you know, just able to share that, you know, like, mm -hmm. whether through, you know, social media or, you know, meetings or, you know, just, you know. Yeah, you talked a little bit about some of the, let's give a little bit of the facts, though. 29% of the Southwest Yonkers residents actually live under uh, the poverty line, and also about 77% of them are actually uh, Latino, black minorities. Uh, when you look at this and you look at the fact, do you find that there's like a gaping hole of services in that area? No, absolutely. And I think, and this is similar to what we see in the Bronx, Harlem, and other communities where, like, we're the majority a lot of times we don't get the resources that we need, right? And it might be for a variety of reasons. But I think that what's unique about this project is that instead of asking the government to provide something or instead of waiting for something to happen, you know, you have a group of young people, former students, young professionals, and professionals working together with the community to put together our own vision for what we would like to see in our community so that we can come up with our own agenda for our community development. Vision, vision is great. But we know money talks, and there's the question about funding. You're going to meet with these uh, with these leaders in a little while. What are you going to talk to them, and how are you going to be able to convince them in the area of funding? What kind of what kind of proposal do you have? So, the fact that it's uh, so school 19, the way that we have the model is a community center, but it's within a business model that can generate revenue, right? And that's important for a couple of reasons. One, it's a community center, so the social services side of it can attract money from the philanthropic community we can get grants we can get government grants but at the same time the business model that we have where we're going to be leasing space to different entities hopefully including the school board and other institutions it can generate revenue so that we can finance it so on top of grant money we'll also be able to attract financing from lending institutions and with the help of the idea um, to get some tax breaks and also some tax credits like the New Markets Tax Credit and Historical Preservation Tax Credit that will help us sort of attract the financing that we need to get the project and construction done. Christopher, what do you want people to 
actually captured through what you've been taking with video and and going around what do you want what are you really hoping that people are going to be able to see through your work i mean um you know maybe it's just you know the cause you know and, and it'll be nice to just see it maybe replicated in other areas you know and just uh i mean it is you know just you know other people are doing work like this but it's just you know to share that and just you know highlight the fact that you know it's done by like a lot of you know community and young people as well and it's just like uh, it's just an overall beautiful thing i think a lot of people enjoy what, a, so what about stuff. this whole project has actually captured your heart, if you will? Uh, just the fact that, you know, I just like being a part of the uh, process of just getting it done, you know, especially, you know, just every day is like, you know, new event, you know, like, you know, I got to drop this off today. It's just like, uh, you know, I'm just excited to be part of that, you know, keep documenting, you know, it just keeps happening. And I think one thing that's really important, so Chris has been compiling footage. My homegirl, Melissa, is working on a documentary about Southwest Yonkers in general. And I think one of the things that's unique about what we've been able to do is capture the work that they've been able to put together and package it in a presentation that's like within media, that's like really able to capture the imagination of supporters. And we've been able to leverage the media that we've been able to put, put together and produce to get supporters and to get commitments of funding. Um, and I think that's sort of a new sort of um, trend in organizing, really incorporating the media aspect. That's why I'm so glad to be working with people like Chris mm. and Melissa and have their support. If you ride up Broadway, if you ride up Broadway all the way up, it just transcends right into yeah. the southwest part of the southwest part of Yonkers. You just go right in, and it's just like a, it's actually the change of a block. We're actually seeing some pictures right here of uh, of, what, of what we consider the uh, southwest Yonkers community. But give us a little bit about this. Uh, the similarities between both Southwest Yonkers and the Bronx, you, you, you find a lot. No, I mean, absolutely. I think a lot of times when people talk about or think about Yonkers, they think of a suburban community. But, you know, growing up in the Southwest side, I had <laughs> no sort of um, no sort of experience like that. And when I go to the Bronx, and like you said, when you transition from the Bronx into Yonkers on Broadway, you're just transferring the border. But characteristic wise, you're seeing the same type of people the same type of structures, the same type of environment, right? And I think it has more to do with the so socioeconomic trends and the people that are there um, more than like the actual city. So we have more things in common in the Bronx than we might necessarily have with the other side of Yonkers. And I think that's a real interesting point that you bring up. So let's give us a little bit about this, this actual multi-purpose facility. For those people who are watching and they want to be able to assist, what can they do to help it with this multipurpose? They can go to freeschool19.com um, and click the donate button, or they can follow us on Twitter to find out things that we have coming up. Um, I think one of the things that we did that was really interesting, we decided to organize community folks to do cleanups of the space. And the last time we did a cleanup, um, you know, Styles P, who actually was a student at that school, came, um, he participated. He did a really good interview for us, and he gave us a really nice drop, and he's been a supporter. Um, so if you follow us on Twitter and Instagram, when we post things, post updates, just retweet it, visit the website. And if you're interested in volunteering, um, you can sign up to get more information about how you can plug into this process. What are your feelings going into this meeting today? Um, I feel confident. We've done a lot of work, um, and I think... The team that we've been able to assemble, even though it was in such a short amount of time, um, is strong enough to make the case that, one, we know what we're doing, and two, we have a vision and a strategy to get the construction and also bring together the partners necessary to, to execute. Um, and I think that the city will recognize that. And they also know that like this is something that's needed. And if this project succeeds, it'll make the city look good, mm -hmm. right? So we don't necessarily have to be at odds with the city. We could work with the city. The city could work with us to get this done because it's in the overall interest of Yonkers. All right. I'm out, Pedro and Chris Gonzalez. Thank you. And best mm -hmm. wishes. As you said, the School 19 meeting is in a little while, so we wish you the best. Now you got to get out of here. All right. Yeah. All righty. Well, we want you to stay with us here because guess what? Coming up after this, we're going to take a quick break. We want you to find out how you can obtain money for your Bronx organization. If you have one, you want to listen, we'll tell you when we come back. Please don't change our channel. We'll give you that info. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up. 
which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Do you have muscle weakness, double vision, trouble chewing or swallowing? You could have myasthenia gravis, a disease which causes severe weakness in the muscles of the body. You can get MG at any age. It can affect your ability to see, speak, walk, smile, or even breathe. Although not curable, with proper treatment, you can lead a protective life. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up so every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour there, there. to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Find out how you can live United for Education. Give, advocate, volunteer. Go to liveunited.org. Do you wear this? Hey, how's it going? Sir, are you okay? What? Oh, this? It's probably nothing. I'm sure it'll go away. Go away? But, sir, that can't be good. No, it's cool, really. Do you want a napkin or something? Everything's fine. Thanks. You wouldn't ignore this. So why ignore the signs of a stroke? At the first warning signs, call 911 immediately. Because time lost is brain lost. And welcome back. I'm Darren Jaime. Remember, this is a live and interactive talk show. And we want to encourage you, join in on the conversation. So follow our social media pages on Twitter at BronxNetTV and Facebook by going directly to Facebook and uh, open BronxNet Television. And there you'll be able to share some information about the show, see some of our past guests, and also we'll be able to hear your feedback. Well, We Are the Bronx is comprised of 25 not-for-profit organizations, and the 2012-2013 Grant Making and Development Committees have created a proposal to provide funding to Bronx-based organizations. Here now to discuss how your organization can actually receive funding is Anthony Myers, Director of Administration and External Affairs from the Bronx Council of the Arts, and Gianna Del... Delolio, who is the director of advancement at Preston High School. We did this in rehearsal. It was good, right? <laughs> it was good. Like, it's right? all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> good to have you both here and sharing with us. And so this is an exciting time, I guess, if you are an organization in the Bronx, and particularly for the people of your fellowship. Yeah, this is a great time for the Bronx. And um, We Are the Bronx Fellowship is an exciting professional development and leadership development program uh, for the Bronx. It works with mid-level managers of nonprofits uh, throughout the borough and teaches us skills to develop and become future leaders. Mm -hmm. um, there are general seminars where experts come and give us tips on speaking and, and interacting with elected officials. Um, and also, we're, uh, we have a project. Um, which is uh, coming together and raising money for the Bronx. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's really about community stability and having an impact for the future. So, Gianna, how does it go about raising money for the Bronx? Well, the, the, uh, our, us as fellows, we're divided into two committees, and Anthony is a member of the Development Committee. What they are doing is they're putting together an online auction. And I believe that online auction is live as we speak. Mm -hmm. So in order to raise money to fund the grants, will give away the money. Um, we are asking people to go to the online auction, bid on our items, and hopefully we'll raise enough to um, give at least one grant of $1,000. Who knows, maybe more. Mm -hmm. And the auction is really exciting. We, we're really reaching out uh, beyond the Bronx, throughout New York City. We have a nook for auction. We have artwork mm -hmm. from top Bronx artists like John Crash Matos. We have musical instruments. Um, and, and you have to go check it out. And we're going to be adding items uh, throughout the month. Um, this will run through April. 
um, we'll also have a promotional event uh, related to the auction uh, at Hostos College, uh, who is a partner with the program in conjunction with the Jewish Community Relations Councils, Cause New York, and the Center for Nonprofits. So everyone's coming together for the Bronx and banding together, and hopefully we can raise a lot of money for this important grant. A few seconds ago, we talked about you know the 25 organizations coming together, a lot of mid-level managers coming together, yes. and a lot of common denominators. What are some of the common denominators that flow between mid-level managers and your organizations? To me, the most important common denominator that binds us all is our love for the Bronx. Yes. And we're all here because we work in the Bronx. Many of us live in the Bronx, we may be residents of the Bronx. We're looking to better the community through our own organizations, through We Are the Bronx, and also through some interesting collaborations. I, for me, I think the biggest advantage of joining the fellowship was to find ways that Preston High School could collaborate with some of these other organizations and work together. Mm -hmm. Right. And what's great is that um, the nonprofits run across industries. Um, education, um, the Bronx Council on the Arts focuses on arts and culture, mm -hmm. there are faith-based organizations, health services and social services, um, but again it is about supporting the Bronx, it's supporting community development, um, and, and there's a quick story, we're both from the Bronx, yes. we actually went to grammar school together really? and had yes. not seen each other again till this program. Yes. Wow. So this we really is... We didn't change at all. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't change not at all. all. No, right? Just a little hair. <laughs> Just a little hair missing, right? Wow. And, and that was really exciting because the grammar school that we went to has since closed. Mm. So, y you know, you look at each other and it's a little bittersweet because uh, a big part of your history is gone for whatever reason. And mm. we want to make sure that the Bronx continues to grow and be vibrant and is here for future generations. Well, definitely one organization will probably be, uh, you know, blessed through this because uh, you have eligible projects and uh, these projects where people will submit for grants. Uh, what, do you, what do people need to do in order to get a favorable submission and to be able to possibly have that name come out right out of the hat? The grant is actually called the Bronx Stability Impact Grant. And we're looking for organizations, nonprofit organizations based in the Bronx with operating budgets of less than $5 million that foster community stability. And specifically through arts and culture or supportive housing or anti-violence initiatives. Um, there's a, a full application and, and all the detail at um, www.communityuplink.net. That went, that didn't go well. Communityuplink.net. But again, we're looking for these organizations that can show a history of, of success and also illustrate to us how they would take these dollars and really put them towards community stability. Mm. And the auction site is uh, benefiteventscom slash JC, uh, uh, slash auctions, slash JCRC, mm -hmm. slash Bronx. Okay. So please check it out. There will be updates. There'll be updates regarding a launch event also around the auction. We're really hoping that the whole Bronx community will come out to support. If you're interested in donating items, we're really looking at luxury goods, services, um, and experiences like spa packages, you name it. Dining um, packages. Dining packages. Okay. Um, we have such great activities in the Bronx and great arts and cultural and entertainment venues. Mm -hmm. um, please get involved. Right. Talk about those fellowships of 25, of 25 organizations. Somebody out there might be an organization. Is there a possibility that they can come and be a part of the fellowship as well? Yes. Yeah, the fellowship, the application period for the fellowship is late spring, early summer. Mm -hmm. So uh, very soon you'll start to see some marketing materials asking for nonprofit leaders to apply. Um, again, go to communityuplink.net. That's where I received my application. Simona Kaplan is our fearless leader She's at Cause, at, yeah. at, at uh, Cause, and, and she can help out. So again, a communityuplink.net. Uh, keep checking it out for updates, and right. you could always contact us as well, and, and we'll put you in. Um, we'll put you in the right hands. Right, and and also keep in mind that this is um, it, it's not an organizational application; it's an individual application. Mm -hmm. They're really interested in developing future leaders, so the organizations can circulate the info, but it's really up to the individual uh, who wants to grow and become a leader okay. to, to apply and, and become a part of it. Um, we, we actually, the program has generated about 100 graduates already, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the alumni have come together uh, through a group called the Bronx Nonprofit Coalition, um, and they're continuing the work mm -hmm. post-program uh, with networking events and fundraising uh, opportunities. So obviously those who take part have an opportunity to learn a little bit more about lessons on leadership. Right. And how to lead and how to be more effective leaders. Any particular lessons you guys can draw from? 
I came from the for-profit world, mm -hmm. and I wasn't in, in the position a, a few months when this opportunity came about. So for me, uh, things like government relations, mm. you know, elected officials may not have been something that I ever, you know, had to anyone I had to interact with in the past. So that was a great, great uh, skill building session. Uh, public speaking, I, I think we could always improve upon uh, public mm. speaking. And again, just the awareness when you say, oh, the Bronx, there's 25 organizations in the fellowship with you at this moment. What are they all doing? And, and just exposing us to a lot of the good that's going on. So that was beneficial for me. I think also um, what's exciting for me, I, I'm, I work in arts and culture. We're focused within our tunnel vision of, of, of fundraising for our organization. You know, I'm, I'm parading mm -hmm. saying Bronx Council on the Arts, Bronx Council on the Arts. But it's great to actually see these other industries and what they're going through um, and really come together and, and really have a unified uh, perspective mm -hmm. and, and create a unified voice and vision for the borough across disciplines. Mm -hmm. So it's not just one, it's, it's the sum of all. Mm -hmm. I was uh, talking to a leadership group actually here in the borough of the Bronx, talking with various organizations organizations that came together and one of the things that came out of it was that since the economy and the recession and things like that businesses whether it's for-profit not-for-profit businesses whether small or large are finding ways that actually be able to, to partner and partner effectively right. given given the current state of times do you find given the current state of times there's more of this togetherness now that's out there that might not have been before partnership has been the key word I think the buzzword across industries mm -hmm. uh, especially in the nonprofit world uh, even with with funders they are looking for groups that are coming together and and building coalitions uh, I think that's going to be the key to survival um, for profit and nonprofit mm -hmm. um, really understanding how partnerships can develop community vision mm -hmm. well before we go let's make sure we get that information out there once again if the public wants to take part and the organization wants to take part so, take it away so applications are due April 3rd, which mm -hmm. seems like a long time away, but right it happens very, very right. quickly. Right. So again, you want to uh, check us out at communityuplink.net mm -hmm. and look for the We Are the Bronx Bronx Stability Impact Grant proposal. And if you'd like to donate or um, bid on some of our online auction items, you go. To, this is the Bronx Community Impact Auction, mm -hmm. and you visit benefitevents.com slash auctions slash jcrc slash bronx all righty well and bid and bid <laughs> well, you're watching, you saw the website right there in front of you and we want to thank gianna Deolio for with, being with us anthony myers for being with us also and uh, we got to take a quick break but guess what we're going to return continue with more of the show actually what we're going to hear about is an event that is designed to strengthen families thank you and thank you Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. 
How you doing? Hi. Hi. Have a nice day. You too. Thanks. If only child abuse were this easy to recognize. If you even suspect abuse, call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. All calls are anonymous and confidential. Trust your instincts. Well, Bronx that's Dare to Dream and the United Fatherhood Coalition have joined together to present Leadership by an Example, an event designed to give fathers training as well as support, featuring a presentation from New York City mayoral candidate Bill de Blasio. We're joined now by Coach Stephen Lynn of Dare to Dream to share more about this event. And uh, good to have you, Coach. Thank you, sir. Good. And so when we talk about uh, this leadership by example, yes. uh, you're really saying that people have to look to others in order to be effective. And who you look at makes a big difference. Very true, particularly with our political figures. We all know the circumstances that we're under now as a, a borough, a city, and a nation because uh, many of our leaders didn't lead by example, if you will. Mm -hmm. So we've chosen this year, particularly, the mayoral candidacy for New York is very important. So we're having all of the candidates, all that have been invited. Bill de Blasio was the first to, uh, for the tryout, if you will, for mm -hmm. the interview, and uh, see what their style is, what's their vision for the city, for families and fathers. Uh, how could we work together, if you will, on making sure that over the next four years and beyond that we'd, uh, curb a lot of the things that are going on now. We, we rescind the trend that we're in. Right. Well, let's look at somebody who's out there watching right now. And they say, listen, what does families and fathers and the mayoral race have to do in common? What do you say to that? We are an answer, like penicillin, if you will, to many of the ills that are, that are plaguing the city, clearly, uh, particularly when it comes to our families, social services, those areas. It's clear. You know, you and I have talked about it many, many times. The father not being involved in the family, the father not being involved in the community, in the school system, you name it, he, he's nowhere to be found, has hurt us dearly. Mm -hmm. We've paid the price as a city and as, as a community. So, you know, for the years we've been pulling this together, we're back on our feet now. We were knocked down, but we're back up, and we want to be involved in all aspects. Mm -hmm. Every detail fathers are going to be involved with regarding this city going forward, because this is our city. Mm -hmm. This is our family. We're not going nowhere. On a national front, President Barack Obama has been very outspoken. He's even f formed a fatherhood initiative. He's had yes. uh, people such as Dwayne Wade and LeBron James and uh, some others to actually come to the forefront and really talk about the whole fact of how fathers are important in American society. Yes. But then that's on a national front. Sometimes we really don't see it on the state front and then pushing it down to the city front. Is it your hope that what the president has initiated will transcend down into possibly a city? And when you look at the mayoral candidates, that hopefully something that they will more vocally adopt? President Obama led by example, not only leading this nation, but also leading his family. On numerous occasions, more than we could count, he's prioritized his family over details, and this is the president. So we said, let's emulate that. There's no excuses, and he said it many times, not only with the initiative, which we've been a part of since day one, however, in, in, by actions, not words. So that's what we're telling fathers, and it, you don't have to be the president to do that. You don't have to be the president to call your kids, go, go talk to their teacher, uh, make them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, all that. <laughs> costs you nothing, but, the, but it's such heavy weight for your family. So that's what we're telling. No excuses. Mm -hmm. What are you hoping to hear from uh, Mr. de Blasio as well as other elected officials? What, 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 what's really gonna, what are you looking to really hear? Well, as I said before, it's an interview, so there's going to be several questions, particularly around, as we've heard from a lot of our guests that are coming, invited guests, education you know that's a hot hot spot here in the city now we, we seem to be on a rudderless course at this point what's he gonna do about that what's his style for that as well as many questions dealing with fatherhood this is our forum so we want to ask from a father's perspective jobs in particular what type of employment opportunities how can we get with the city more what is the city's plans for development mm -hmm. and housing too that seems to be a big uh, big issue with us we're looking for affordable housing for our families more things that we can buy more home ownership we'll do what we have to get our credit tight we'll get ready but give us the opportunity mm -hmm. what's your plans mm -hmm. so that's what we're going to really drill him on uh, what's he see for the next four years and beyond candidates that are going to be coming obviously well and this is not just as we said this is not just for uh, mr de blasio but any mayoral candidate you, you, you've made the invitation to Correct. what's been the reception of those mayoral candidates thus far when you put fatherhood and this initiative to the table today welcome arms can't wait 
can't wait. We, we staggered them for a reason is we did not want them all in one room at the same time. We didn't want to hear you piggybacking off someone's answer. We didn't want any infighting. We don't want to hear it right now. I just want to hear you. Mm -hmm. So all of them now, we are now putting them in place over through the next, uh, out through November. They'll be there quite a bit mm -hmm. and uh, working with us. It's more than them just presenting their case. We are putting together a team. We're going forward with or without you. Mm -hmm. So show us what you're bringing to this team. How do you play? It'll be a little interesting because you have at least one female candidate, Christine Quinn, yes. as, of, as of right now. And she's going to be there. Um, are you, how do you approach dealing with her in the same, do you deal with her in the same manner that you deal with any of the uh, male candidates? Yes, uh, Ms. Quinn has been wonderful. All of them have been at this point. Uh, she understands to date the things that are before us. She mm -hmm. mentioned that in the uh, state of the uh, city address before the city council. However, we're going to fine tune some things. As you know, Mayor Bloomberg, similar to the president, was uh, big on fatherhood. He started his own initiative where he pulled all the city agencies together, all of them. Each one is to have a fatherhood initiative. He was very forthcoming in that. Will she continue that? Mm -hmm. You know, this money was put aside for DYCD. Um, he had NYC Dads outlet, events, those types of things. Will you not only continue that, but will you elevate it? Mm -hmm. Let's do some more things. Let's put an all-out blitz on this fatherhood piece because, as we said before, it seems to cure a lot of the other ills. Dropout rates go down. Teen pregnancy goes down. Gang violence goes down. All those because the father is in the house or involved in the child's life, period. So a big concern for you is definitely making sure that fatherhood stays on the uh, stays on the campaign trail, exactly. and not just on the campaign trail, but also whoever gets in get, gets into city hall. What advice would you give to an elected official who's you know trying to frame her, their, their their you know their campaign and their strategy? What advice would you give them as to the importance of fatherhood and what it means for our city? Well, it means everything at this point. As I said before, it is clearly a cure. Um, they need to be a leader at this point, which means oftentimes you have to be a follower. To be a great leader, leadership by example, means that you're willing to sit at a table and let those who have been in this game for a little while, the veterans, talk for a little while, teach you. Mm -hmm. Don't come to the table with all these ideas and it's going to be my way or no way. That's not how we play on this team, this fatherhood team. So all of them seem to have been very receptive. Bill de Blasio came out first. We're so thankful. We, uh, we applaud him for that. He jumped on it immediately because of his position and going for the, for the mayoral candidacy, but more importantly because he is a father. And he's, he said that clearly, I'm worried about my two boys. I'm worried about what could happen to them. What future do they have? So uh, we implore all of them, join us, as well as the community, come out and join us that day. For those who are in this game, this political game, for the future, come join us. Come see and hear them before they get in the seat. What do you say to your critics who might say, oh, this is a little gender bias here. You're talking about fathers and why are fathers so important? Why do fathers have to be a part of the campaign trail? I kind of have an understanding because I'm a father myself. But for those people who might be critics who are out there, say it's a little gender bias right here. You're talking about a fatherhood initiative and bringing that into the campaign. What do you say to them? I just laugh at them. All I know is being a father. Mm -hmm. All the team knows is being fathers. That's what we do. Um, we did not have an actual voice at this level for a long time, if ever. You know, this is still a fledgling movement. Since the president got in, it, did it really kick off? So in, for, in order for us to get to the point where our voices are truly heard all the way through the halls of Congress, we had to stay focused. We had to stay on our topic. We couldn't cure the whole illnesses, all of them, but we f wanted to cure the one particularly that we had a lot of cause with. Mm -hmm. Some of it was self-inflicted. So we said, let's concentrate on fixing that problem, and maybe the other things will take care of itself. And we, let's be clear on that. We want to be a force, NRA. We want to be able to stand up as, and equal their numbers or more and say, we're not having it. The fathers don't want no assault rifles. You, you and I have talked about it before. Mm -hmm. It's done, NRA. And, and when a million fathers stand up tight, I guarantee you, they'll either run for cover or watch what they say. But you'll have some people also there in, the, in that fatherhood movement that say, listen, we support the National Rifle Association, too. But the one thing about it is, is that fathers will have a voice. And I think the people are looking for whether or not fathers will actually be able to stand up and, and have a voice. Since Barack, uh, President Barack Obama has actually taken office and created this fatherhood initiative, are we seeing more men actually rise up and become active? It's incredible. The numbers are great. We see it everywhere, especially in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I, I, want, I must say, because this is 
my house, mm -hmm. my family. We are the leaders, no doubt. And uh, just all around the Bronx, you see them on the bus, on the train, in the grocery store, at the schools in particular, mm -hmm. where fathers are dropping them off, picking them up, taking them to ballet, coming to their team practices, doing the things that are necessary, even though they're still not working or the circumstances might be dire. They understand that if I make sure my kids don't go the same route I am, maybe I'll get a shot. And they believe that now. So we're seeing it all over the country, particularly here in New York. We're not playing. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And here in the borough of the Bronx, borough President Ruben Diaz Jr., very much active. I yes. know there's been a dialogue. There's been things down at, uh, at, uh, at, at basically City Hall, the borough hall, if you will. Yes. Uh, talk to us about the borough president and his involvement with the Fatherhood Initiative. Well, the Bronx Fathers Taking Action Council, which spawned out of his uh, event last year, the summit we have, is incredible. We uh, have been doing fantastic things. We helped to co-sponsor the Allen Houston Foundation Tour, which is packed mm -hmm. every week, fathers and kids. Um, we've done several events. We're working now with the school districts on making sure that each school has a fatherhood initiative in it, every school. Um, all those times of great things at cutting edge. We have the second annual coming up on March 23rd, the second annual Fatherhood Summit, which is at the Bronx Museum. Fantastic venue, mm -hmm. but it's more of a training, not just talking about it, but you're going to get trained that day from the best. Mm -hmm. And when, when they leave that summit that day, Fathers can no longer say, I don't have the resources, I don't have the opportunity, or I don't have the knowledge, because we're going to fill that cup that day, mm. March 23rd, and more. Much softball games coming up, the All-Star Dad softball game in June, and just great stuff coming up. For people who want to be a part of this, how can they be a part of the movement? They could always contact our office, of course, NYC, Dare to Dream at AOL.com. We're using several ports now. Probably the best way to do it that they can stay tied to everyone is to like us on Facebook. My dad is love. Mm. My dad is love. Like us on Facebook because then you'll be tied into all of the fatherhood programs all over the country. I want to go back to that screen again and let you know about that leadership by example uh, conversation that's going to be held with mayoral candidate Bill de Blasio. Uh, there'll be all of the mayoral candidates will have an opportunity, but this one will be first initiated by uh, mayoral candidate Bill de Blasio. It's taking place Friday, March the 1st, this coming Friday, 6 p.m. at the Fatherhood Training Center. We want you to come on out to 281 East Burnside on uh, in the Bronx, and there you will get, meet Coach Lynn, uh, Dare to Dream, and uh, be a part of that fatherhood initiative that is going to be actually... A, a, a fierce movement for what many people are saying. Thank you. Uh, of really attracting Thank you. Uh, politicians, community, mm -hmm. and engaging. Do you feel like you're actually bridging that gap now? Yes. You, to be very honest with you, our cause is rarely denied, no matter who it is, across mm -hmm. all aisles, across all nationalities. A father is a father. Issues know no boundaries. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one galvanizing force that we said we could all stick together on this because this is our children. And I don't really care where you're from, what you believe in, our kids go to school together. They're going to grow up together. So let's stick together. Mm -hmm. Let's stick together. And everybody seems to be cool. And one thing that we've always talked about, and you've talked to, you know, uh, in our own conversation, is when you talk about fatherhood, sometimes people look at us and we talk, about, it's just about, you know, minorities. And the fact of the matter is, it's everyone. A dad everyone, is a dad. A father is a father. That's right. That's right. Well, Coach Steve Lynn, Dare to Dream, thank you so much thank for being you. with us here. Thank you. Tell us about your show before we go so that we can give us some information about that. Tuesday nights at 8, Dare to Dream, the dare is on. Mm -hmm. I'm daring you. Reach for success. Take care of your family first. Your dreams will come true. All righty, Coach Steve Lynn, Dare to Dream, Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. He comes on before somebody else you might know. They come on Tuesday at 830. Kind of looks familiar talking to you right now. Yeah, it's a show called Perspectives, and uh, we can catch Steve Lynn there Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. Of course, yours truly at 830 in the wonderful lineup on Tuesdays. Got to take a quick break, but guess what? There will be more open when we return. We're not done with it yet, so stay with us. We're coming right back in a second. Hey, Mom. You know, girls, I used to cheer back in my day. Ready? Okay! Go, team! That was amazing. 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 Mom. That was amazing. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. These things we count on every day started as ideas. 
ideas from the minds of African Americans. Support minority education today so we don't miss out on the next big idea tomorrow. The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. You know, when I was younger, man, my, my brother was the one who really took care of me, man. Is that right? Hey, he'd wake me up in the morning, get me ready for school, take a shower, have, make me some breakfast. Where your brother at now? Oh, you know, all right. I get lonely, nobody to talk to. I felt like quitting school. He looked at me dead in my eye, he told me, if not for me, do it for him. Give Josh and our class of 08 the boost they need to graduate. Join us at boostup.org. Dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who take you just as you are. down our show we want to bring you someone else who is a photographer he's captured the history and memories before many natives left the country of Latvia and the connection to the country that they held on through social media we welcome now Rainy Rainus Fyodorovs and I uh, said it right right yes yeah there you go I was working I was practicing and I'm glad I got it right yeah you did well we'll let you do the talking how yeah, about that okay. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit about your work, because you're a photographer, as we said, okay. and a photographer that's actually captured images of uh, some, what we would consider very emotional uh -huh. uh, uh, events. Okay, yeah, so um, I'm uh, here um, at, the, at, at the moment. Um, I have two projects. So mm -hmm. my um, the second project uh, is about uh, immigration from Latvia nowadays, because it's a very important issue in Latvia, because a lot of people are emigrating from Latvia, mainly to Western Europe, and some are coming here. Uh, there are different uh, reasons why they do that, but that's uh, because Latvia is a very, very small country, and uh, they, there are significant numbers of people who are em emigrating from Latvia. So, and I decided that that's very important to document this process. And what I did, I was taking the uh, pictures of the people in um, light of the laptop or computer or in front of them. So it kind of uh, represents the the connection with Latvia, what they have, in reality, they have connection only via social media, Skype, and maybe s emails. So they don't actually, they aren't physically in Latvia, but they communicate through the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the internet. And the um, first project, uh, which, which, which I was doing last year, it is about, I was documenting the objects, what they took from Latvia in early 40s when they were uh, fleeing the communist forces. They had to, um, uh, the, it happened very quickly. Mm -hmm. So they had to decide what they are taking, what they are not taking, and they all thought they will come back. So, and they, they fled Latvia through the Germany, and then they uh, went to the different, yes, those are the objects. And this is the piece of jewelry of, um, of, of the, uh, this is the uh, Latvian um, coin. Say? Uh, it's, it's, it's not a coin, it's a, it, it was a coin, but then it was made in a piece of jewelry, what, what, what you put on your shirt. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and those people, they have kept, and, and this is the man's photographs, different photographs starting from his childhood and youth, and probably his childhood, it's, it's, it might be in Latvia, and then that's in America, the, the mm -hmm. last pictures, and those are his hands. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it's an older gentleman there, and, and definitely holding on to those photographs, continue. Yeah, and uh, this is um, uh, f uh, this is the piece of um, uh, photograph 
which you use in um, how to say icon. I don't know in English. It's mm -hmm. it's it's, uh, it's 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 related to church. So you you kind of have that piece and you keep in your pocket or or wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the watch. I think it was a person's father's watch. So that's what what what, what you have uh, left. And so basically, these are images. I mean, these are just objects that people just would take. Yeah. With the hope that they were coming back. Yeah. And then, in many cases, they didn't. Uh, almost in all cases, they didn't. What happened? They they thought when the war will be over, they'll come back. But as you know, that the, the, there was a Soviet Union and there was a Iron Curtain, so they couldn't go back. Only in early, uh, I think, 70s or 90s, they were able to go back as tourists. But they were watched, as I was told by the KGB. They they were they weren't allowed to travel outside the city, mm -hmm. so they were just you know as a tourist and nothing else. What has been the mood or what has been the, you know, the, the basic sentiment of those persons who've actually not had the opportunity to either go back and, 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 and be able to live, yeah. but actually have had to force themselves to have a different kind of life? As you're taking these pictures, what kind of, what kind of emotions and what kind of things do you see and hear from these people? Okay. The thing is that Latvian identity for them is very important. And what's interesting, uh, in abroad, that, that identity is the one thing where they are... What, what, what's, what's keeping all Latvians together, that Latvian identity. And le, le, um, let's say in Latvia, comparing with Latvia, we don't really, um, we tell, take that as a self-granted, so we don't really think about that. But when, when they are abroad, so these, la, like Latvian church, um, let's say these things, Latvian language, it's very important for them. So, it, it, yes, mm -hmm. that's their the identity. So your art, it's uh, you know your photography, it's being seen around. Where do people actually actually have an opportunity to see your things? Okay, um, I don't have a website at the moment. Probably, mm -hmm. yeah, you can find me on Facebook. I uh, put put some things there, but mm -hmm. uh, um, I have exhibitions. One one are coming up in Latvia, and then one probably will be at the end of the year in London. So I have studied in London, and now right. I'm live, now I live in Latvia. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so as you studied in London, you did another project as well. Uh, talk to us about that project. Which project? The one that you did in London. Did you, you said you did a pro Did you do a project in no, London? No, I studied there. Okay. So when, when, when I lived in London, I actually was doing street photography. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, yeah, but that's different, uh, different type of photography. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're glad to have you here sharing okay. with us. And of course, as you said, you can go to your Facebook page. Yeah. See a couple of pictures. Yeah. As you continue to capture the images of uh, those persons. And thank you for coming to yeah, share with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. has been here with us. And uh, definitely been a pleasure coming to your homes. we got to end our show show right now but i uh, want to thank our guests for joining us and especially you the viewer for tuning in now if you did miss any part of the show have no fear because guess what the re cable cast will be there 10 o'clock on uh bronx net uh open i should say channel 67 anytime then also you can hit us up on the web www.bronxnet.org a few places that you can actually be able to see past episodes as well as share your comments we tell you to get with us on our social networking sites Twitter, as well as Facebook. And we encourage you, have a great week. Don't forget, keep your heart, your mind, and most of all, this channel wide open. Darren Jaime signing off and saying God bless y'all. Take care.